So in the previous videos, I sort of uh, briefly touched on and alluded to that we'd be working with some sort of input data. And so the input data has a very precise structure. Uh, typically, we'll, we'll need some sort of file format, and then within that, we'll have some terms we need to use. Uh, and you've, if, if any of you have read the chapter uh, on input data in the, in the book, uh, and the book is very good because it, it's actually written by the same people who created Weka, the same authors, and, uh, and, and they're very active in the data mining and machine learning field. So it's a, it's a good book and it matches up pretty well with the software. But uh, they probably use some terms that we need to define and go through. So we have our input data and that's gonna be in a, in a, in a file and that file is usually a text file with uh, a bunch of data. And so uh, for any of you who are, who are familiar with experience, with Excel, you have rows and columns, and then typically a row is some sort of uh, what Weka will call, and in the authors of the book, an instance. And uh, they'll sort of interchangeably use the name example. Uh, and then the other thing we have is an attribute. Okay, so uh, probably the easiest way to explain exactly what these are is to bring up our data. So uh, within this play data, uh, again, if, if you don't know what this is, uh, when you install Weka, it'll actually create a data folder and uh, you can go in there and, and it'll create a bunch of R files and it's basically uh, some data. Let's say we're playing a sport like basketball or something and, and, and this is our training data that will decide if we're going to play that sport or not based on a given day. Uh, each row is our instance, our example. So uh, say we took um, the last however many examples there are here, uh, let's say 15. We took the past 15 days weather and then based on that, uh, whether whether the the referees of that sport and the administrators of that sport decided to play that sport or not, uh, we inputted that. Every single day is our instance. Within that we have our attributes and you can even see within uh, Weka within this special file format called an ARF format, we have our attributes. And uh, so if you're working with Excel or some sort of uh, row column tool like that that you're, that you're possibly used to working with, uh, each one of these columns would be our attribute. And so uh, within here our outlook uh, attribute has the value sunny and then here our attribute outlook uh, has the value overcast and then so we have uh, different types of attributes and let me write these different types of attributes down for you so within attribute we have And again, I, I'll, I'll probably apologize every single video for my handwriting with this tablet, but it's a little tough to use. We have numeric. And nominal. Okay, so numeric data. What is numeric data? Uh, let's let's go to our example here, weather.numeric. And so we have our attribute temperature, and it's a numeric attribute. And you can see that's pretty self-explanatory. It's a number. Numeric means number. Okay? Uh, I don't need to probably explain it too much because I think that's sometimes you can over-explain things and make them more confusing than they need to be. But just know that, that numeric is a type of attribute. And the other we have is a nominal. So in this, in this instance... Uh, in this case, we have our attribute, outlook, and we have nominal values. And what nominal values are, are very specific, uh, uh, a limited set, a finite set that they can take. So, so technically, really, uh, numeric is any number. And, and of course, there's limits to how many no numbers your computer can store based on whether it's 64 bits or 32 bits and so on and so forth. But really, uh, ideally, it's any number uh, with a... Uh, With a nominal attribute, uh, there's a very finite 
number of, of uh, values it can take and we have to predefine those values and what ends up happening is uh, um, when we're making decision trees uh, that affects uh, the type of tree that's generated so in the case of J48 one of the things it makes is, is what's known as a decision tree and uh, you'll notice that when we actually generate the decision tree uh, based on if the data was numeric or nominal that we get uh, different types of trees and the trees will look slightly different and so that's the internals of the algorithm we don't have to worry too much about that we're gonna uh, this isn't a mathematics course on machine learning and and some of these algorithms can get really complicated really quick so we won't go over that it, this is this is more about uh, high level how to use the software and so forth so uh, that's our input file or I'm sorry that's our, our uh, instances and attributes so I hope that makes sense now we have to move on to the actual file format and so you've probably worked with different file formats Excel and and what's known as a CSV which actually turns out feeds into Excel pretty easily and Excel can can turn that CSV which is a comma comma uh, comma separated format or comma se comma separated values I should say and uh, it can turn it into pretty easily an Excel file with with rows and columns and then it turns those into uh, to cells and you can do equations and so forth uh, but Weka specifically works with uh, a file format known as ARF and ARF is very very similar to a CSV and actually it is a CSV and the only difference is is you have these things in the beginning that that we we have our metadata that sort of defines the data that's about to come so relation uh, is is just a name we're, we're saying that we're calling this relational data weather and then here we're defining our attributes so it knows exactly what these are because without it it would it would be a little strange because we would get a bunch of uh, a bunch of learners, uh, a bunch of models, and we wouldn't know really what the data was. It, it would just kind of have some, some funny stuff. So that's why we have names. Names are really, for us as humans, it could probably internally generate a name. Uh, but then this is the important part. We have to, dis uh, and these are, these are uh, relevant to the algorithms. And so we have to, to, have, have, to have to say all the, uh, for the, uh, for the nominal data, we have to give all the possible values that nominal data can take, or we have to declare it to be. Um, uh, uh, we have to declare the data that either numeric or nominal, and so that's what this this last is here. Um, as we as we go on, maybe later in the semester, we'll we'll be using CSV files directly, and and uh, some of the other tools and programs can just use a CSV. And, uh, and then we can use the, the user interface to, to actually type in things and, and uh, it'll basically internally generate some sort of our file format equivalent. Uh, but don't worry about that too, too much now. We're, the data we're working with will already be given to, to us in an ARF file format. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, uh, really there's not too much to to understand here and sometimes as I said you can over explain things but I hope this is simple enough that everybody kind of gets it on the first run here <laughs>